Hey, what's up, everyone? What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Whoa, wow, I just went blurry. Yeah, you went blurry. Anyway. I'm back now. I'm back. Hey, what's a start? What's a start of a podcast if it's not bumpy with Pete and Jimbo? I'm right? telling you, they're really, they're really I thought you were starting it off earlier with the, uh, you know, uh, what'd you have for breakfast this morning, Pete? <laughs> I haven't done that in a long time. A long time. But if uh if you guys I still don't think that's funny, by the way. It when is I think funny. back about that. And it's still a good one. Right. It, I still should use it. I think, in fact, someone thought I was doing that the other day, too, but I wasn't. You but. should do that to like you get like a really high profile person like the president of McGuire is on and then just do that. To him. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what do you have for breakfast? I'm doing a mic check. What do you have for breakfast? <laughs> um, uh, anyway, welcome back to the auto detailing podcast. If you don't recognize that sexy devil of a voice, that's Pete Mitchell. And those of you in the detailer inner circle. What's the website, Pete? Detailerinnercircle.com. Are we starting off with that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, you recognize that voice because we do a podcast, a private podcast, the inner circle group, whatever you want to call it, uh, where we talk about really the latest marketing trends and, and kind of ways that detailers can increase their revenue and uh, really build a solid business. We do that once a month over there. Uh, but in this podcast, we're going to talk politics and uh, why Pete's moving to Texas. <laughs> and nothing to do with detailing. No, I'm joking. We're gonna we're gonna talk all about detailing, marketing for detailers, and then uh, we even have a really cool offer that we'll talk about in a little bit. But we'll save all that for later. P, what's new? Uh, what's new with you? You were telling me about your news detox because when COVID hit two years ago, all you could do is watch the news. Totally. So I I remember <laughs> it was funny. I remember back when COVID first, it was like March of 2020 or whatever. And even if you go back, I did, I freaked out. Like, I think a lot of people did, right? It was like, it was all consuming. It was something new that at least I hadn't seen anything even remotely close to it before. Um, and so I did two things. I went crazy with podcasts and I did like eight podcasts in a row of like how I thought detailers should handle this looming issue right. that we had, right? And it was so funny because a lot of, so-called influence detail detail influencers or people that have trainings or whatever in the detailing space we're telling detailers like let's do the right thing let's just like shut down and just you know it's it'll be okay just shut down and i really felt like i was the only one out there like no do the opposite <laughs> like right. double down you know don't don't rely on the government to help you no one's going to bail you out like this is totally up to you to handle so i did a lot of podcasts but then at the same time i was also watching a lot of like press conferences and you know during if we think back to that time like cuomo's press conferences were like winning emmys or would later win emmys or whatever was happening right and so i was like really enthralled into the like these press conferences and like watching the news on youtube like all the time and it really made me a horrible person and i you know looking back on it now i think that was the goal whether that uh, of the news whether on purpose or on accident but i've really had to kind of take a step back and do like this this like news detox because it really uh, affects me. <laughs> and I don't know if it affects everyone, but like, it makes me a horrible person. It makes me super scared. Like it makes it, it handicaps me from making any decisions. And then I hate that. Right. But then what I started to think about is that's how the majority of people are feeling, right? Because it's really difficult not to feel like that. But if you do actions in the opposite direction of that, it actually becomes a really unfair advantage to you or, or, or a really big advantage. I call it an unfair advantage, whatever, but it really becomes a big advantage that you could use to your um, kind of your benefit of like, okay, everyone else is scared while everyone else is scared. I'm going to go do all this stuff and I'm going to blow up my business. So that's what I've really been trying to do. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny because I'm constantly reading stories on the internet. I mean, I spend my day on the internet, right? Cause I'm a marketer. So I'm always reading stories on the internet and, um, I, it, everything infuriates me. Like who would have guessed that two years after this thing started, we'd have our, uh, our esteemed, uh, uh, emperor of California go, Oh, by the way, we're going to go into another mask mandate. Cause you know, which I love that most, well, not most about 15% of people aren't following it and no one's enforcing it. Dude, I went to Costco yesterday and the 
the lady is like, oh, the mask mandate started just the other day. And she hands me a mask. And I literally uh, let my emotions get the better of me. And oh, I, no, I no. might have dropped a, an F <clears throat> the mandate right there. Yep. I was like, are you serious? Like, right. no one else is making me wear a mask, but you're going to make me wear a mask. Yeah, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with all of it. It's just, but here's the thing. I, I use that news because you know the story and our detailers in the inner circle at uh, detailerinnercircle.com. Uh, That's right. Good one. It's been a while yeah, since we yeah. threw it in there. Um, Thanks for that. They know because they, they listen to our, our private uh, secret podcast. Very, very private. Yes, that very secret. I'm trying my hardest to get out of California. I have been trying. I'm 46 years old. I've been trying for at least 45 years <laughs> to get out of California because <laughs> I can't stand it here. And my wife, who literally lived in the same house her entire life until the day we got back from the honeymoon, does not like change, like at all. She doesn't like change. It's not her thing. But I seriously think that Newsom could be the greatest governor that California has ever had because he's the reason that she's now saying, okay, we can move to Texas. <laughs> and I'm like, this is the greatest thing in the world, right? So, um, so I'm constantly like reading the news and then I'll go to my wife and I go, oh, did you hear what Biden said? Oh, did you hear what Newsom said? Because I'm like trying to feed and foster that. Got whole, it. We, we do get to leave, right? You're, you're not just leading me on. Right. Like, we're, we're leaving at the end of the school year, right? Like, so that's that's how I use the, the news. I'm using it to my advantage to get me that out of Dodge. Yeah, which, I, I mean, I yeah, I think that's great. I just know for me, it's like, it, it becomes an extra burden. And I'm like, oh man, this is just too too much to deal with. But you have ulterior motives. I do. But here's the reality <laughs> though. Every time, like when he came out with that mask mandate again, it just felt like all that pressure came right back Yes. On. And it's yes. like, are you kidding me? This crap again? Like, it yes. just was so disheartening. I think that's a good way to put it. It's it's a lot of pressure, yeah. right? And then on top of everything else, it's just like, I can't deal with this. Is a lot, Which has me thinking, to be honest, of like, well, maybe it's a good time to like, if you didn't have that external pressure being pushed on you, how much further can you go? How much more could you grow your business? How many more clients could I do? You know, and so right. definitely has me thinking of like, man, if if there wasn't that pressure, you know, and whether we like it or not, it's like even your example of walking into Costco and someone handing you a mask and telling you about the mandate. It's just like all those emotions flaring back up of like, oh, yeah, like, oh, just that in and of itself is a lot, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No. So but I'm done with it just like you are. I, yeah. I'm sick of it. You know, it is what it is here in the, the great Literally state of California. Worked. What are you going to do? I mean. Other than leave, <laughs> other than leave. And, and, you know, to be honest, that's, that is, you know, it's funny. We always tell people like when Trump was president, right. And not that we're condoning Trump at all, but people would always say like, Oh, if you don't like it, leave. Like, if you don't like the U S then leave. Right. And that was like the counter argument for people that like, didn't want the wall bill or whatever. Right. right? Or wanted open borders or whatever. It was like, if you don't like America, like leave. And now it's kind of like, well, if you don't like California leave. And I'm like, crap like okay <laughs> you're right right Your terms like, are acceptable to me sir <laughs> like like you're right if i don't well, like it i need to leave it, and i was bringing this up to my wife and she happened to have read the same article uh a new study's out that shows that the amount of people moving into california dropped by like 48 percent mm -hmm. and then the amount of people leaving california increased by like 13 or 18 percent mm -hmm. like and, and it says, researchers are surprised. I'm like, how can you be surprised? It's, I mean, how? I don't get it. It's uh, researchers and polls. Polls are another one that's always funny to me. Even like I saw one for Fox News and it's like a Fox News poll says that, you know, 53% of people are, uh, are, aren't happy with Joe Biden. I'm like, you polled people that listen to Fox News. Like what? <laughs> what did you expect? Or like when the election's going on and it's like our margin of error is eight and a half percent. It's like, oh, how is this even reliable information? This right. is crazy. Well, the thing that I, I'll, this, this is, the, I, we'll get off the subject, but this is, yeah. this was the final thing that pushed my wife over the edge and was like, okay, we can leave. California has the recall election. Right. And Newsom doesn't just win. He overwhelms. Landslides. Wins. He gets 222 thousand more votes in the recall than what originally got him elected first of all if you believe those votes are all legit but right. i'm just like 
Dude, people like him. If apparently, we, I'm like, it's the people. I got to yeah. get out of here because of the people. I can't even blame the leadership. Yep. It's the people. Anyway, we have better news than that, right, Pete? We do. We better got all news. kinds of news. We got we got all kinds of news um, going on. In fact, we'll talk about a couple of different ideas that people can use to get more detailing clients, just so we're you know giving them great value, not just uh, COVID talk. <laughs> COVID, <laughs> COVID two COVID months talk. later, two years later. Gosh. <laughs> Whatever. Oh my gosh, who would have, who would have thought? <laughs> but um, in fact, you know what? In fact, this, this, is one, this is one of the things that we'll talk about. So right now, you and I are running a contest for the Detailer Inner Circle. Yep. And we're giving away 12 months of the Inner Circle. That's basically in the 12 months, you're going to go through all of our different training programs. You're going to get all of those uh, access to our, our private podcast calls that we do every month. Um, the website that we do, the client generation website. Uh, all of that for 12 months. In fact, I'll just tell you guys where you can go sign up to get in this contest. You can go to uh, detailergiveaway.com and just go sign up. Uh, I think all you got to do is put in your email address, actually. And um, and then we give you an ethical way that you can stuff the ballot box. Like you post it on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and all that jazz. Tell your friends. In fact, I think you get like an extra three entries if you put out your link and someone joins through your link. So if you've got friends who are detailers or you're part of a detailing group or something like that, you know, you could share that and basically ethically stuff the ballot box in your favor. Um, you can get like 220,000 extra ballots. <laughs> you really could. Votes, right? Okay. Right. Just, but they would be legitimate. Just, yeah, just curious. But, um, but what's interesting about this, like, so you and I brought up running contests years ago in the detailer inner circle. And man, I was trying to remember the guy's name. He was uh, in the detailer inner circle, and then he left detailing altogether. Um, but he was he was a great guy, and he did mostly airplanes. Do you remember that guy? I think it was like Eric or something like that was his name. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't even remember where he was based out of because I remember he ended up linking up with a guy I think in San Diego here that joined the inner circle for a while. But he had a great airplane business going. I do, I can't remember his name. Yeah, can't I can't remember. remember it either. And it was just totally escaping me the other day when I was thinking about this. We so we were, we were encouraging everyone, hey, you know what? You run a contest and um, and you do that for a lot of different reasons. But like we just basically showed a really simple model of running a contest, running it on Facebook and basically offering, I think what he offered in his, because we put some of the slides in the training material uh, or pictures, I should say, images of his his ads that he ran. I think he was giving away like a free external detail. Uh, and I want to say it was like $150 value. I honestly don't remember off the top of my head. And, you know, basically we just said, hey, you know what? You run this to the area that you want to serve. Um, you could do it as what Facebook calls a lead generation form, which is just basically a, a really inexpensive way to, um, to run ads and you don't have to have a landing page or like you and I, we use special software that does the whole thing where, you know, people can get extra, extra entries for sharing it on Facebook and stuff like that. But you don't have to have any of that stuff. Like you could just literally use Facebook lead generation ads. And um, so we did that. He spent, I think it was like $10 a day for 14 mm -hmm. days. So a total of 140 bucks. And then following the format that we gave him, I think he made like $3,800 within the first seven days of the contest being done, because there's a, there's a whole formula that we walk people through, you know, when you run a contest, it's not so you can give away stuff. It's so you can get more clients. Like that's the whole point to get more business. And so, by the way, can you hear my dog behind me? Uh, a little bit, but not too bad. Dude, like she's totally asleep until I get on a freaking <laughs> Zoom of course. Call. And then she's like, I can see her like pulling blankets back and forth. And <laughs> All of a sudden likes toys, super oh thirsty, gosh. like never drank more water in her right. life than exactly. right now. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. But That's funny. anyway, um, but, but he did it. And it what was really funny to me is like, there, there's a whole strategy of which you should be able to pull out just a significant amount of money when you roll, when you run a contest. Got the zoomies now. I know, right? You can see it in the background. I even no. tried to shut the door, but she stuck her blanket there so the door won't close. Oh my gosh. Smart, stinking dog. But um, but anyway, so you know, we've got this whole strategy in place. And what was funny is because I went to him, I said, Hey, 
so part of it is in your follow-up you follow up right. with everybody who who entered the contest and that's we've got a, a strategy of what you say in order to get business out of that group and so there's there's basically three follow-ups that you do you do one like seven days later one 14 days later one 21 days later and so i remember him making like 3800 bucks off of the first follow-up and i go hey uh how did your second and third follow-ups go and he goes Oh, I didn't have enough time. I didn't do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, I get it. Right. But when you get that much business in, I mean, right. it's kind of like, well, that's cool. You know, I spent 140 bucks. I made 3,800. Totally. I'll get around to the, the other follow-up that they tell us to do later. Right. Right. But anyway, I mean, so, so there's all kinds of different strategies that, that people can employ. In fact, I would tell everyone go to uh, detailergiveaway.com sign up and then you'll see our actual strategy on what we do mm -hmm. with the contest to help us uh, which is what we always do right we're always transparent about what we're doing and then tell you guys to do the same thing and i think we even have one of those lessons with our own results i think in the detailer inner circle of like here's a contest we ran here's how it went here's everything you know right. and that's really what's inside the detailer inner circle is is marketing tips but also a, basically a marketing blueprint right which right. is really what i've always been on my high horse about for a long time in the detailing industry is that sure it's fine you know how to do paint correction or you know how to do whatever right whatever service you know how to offer but that service really doesn't matter until you know how to get a client to do it too and that is by far the number one issue that detailers have is getting new clients. So we see it all the time because we see these people joining and they're like, I either want to quit my job or I need new clients or blah. The, the number one issue is how do I get more clients, which what they're really saying is like, how do I make more money? Right. right? And so the detailers, the, the detailer inner circle is all about making more money as a detailer and being more profitable as a detailer, how to get clients, how to follow up with clients and all that. And I really thought, man, this would be a great idea if we could give one away right. um, and, and kind of, you know, then show you guys the process too. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because you and I started working together back in, I think it was like 2016 when we did the detailer marketing boot camp. We did it yep. there at McGuire's um, yep. in Irvine. And one of the things that we were really trying to get people to understand is what you really want to set up in your business is some sort of continuity plan. That's what we call it. That's basically where you have money coming in every month and you don't have to go out there and find a new client. Cause that's, that's not a good position to be in where you're like, Oh man, what am I going to do this week? Or what am I going to do? It leads to desperation. And then when you're desperate, yeah. you start doing weird things like lowering your prices, doing shoddier work. Cause you're desperate. Right. And you really don't want to ever work out of a, a, a mind frame of desperation. I don't think. No, you never do. And like what we were trying to show them is, hey, guys, here's how you can set up a continuity program where on the first of every month, you know, you've got five grand, eight grand, 10 grand, whatever it is coming mm -hmm. in because you've got your clients already set up. And now it's just a matter of most of them have like a scheduled time for when you're going to detail their vehicle, whether they bring it to you, like you've got a fixed shop or you go to them because you're mobile. Um, and I remember a lot of the guys were like, you know, fascinated by the concept. And then it's very hard for them to then employ it, right? Because in yes. their mind, they're like, I've never done this before. Um, I remember you telling us that you had some uh, continuity client for like years. I think you had to do their van like every week or something like that. Their sprinter like, van, yep. Yeah, you're like, yeah, I don't know. The house had all kinds of cameras around it. I'm yep. not sure what they did in the house, but uh, they wanted they had... their, their cars cleaned and they paid cash. <laughs> Yep. They had bar. They were like in a super nice neighborhood. I think their house was worth like, I don't know, a couple million bucks. And they had like, uh, they actually had a double lot in a neighborhood that I don't even know how they got a double lot, but they had like bars on their windows and it's not a bars on your windows neighborhood right. at all. Right. And they had like a, a solid metal gate that like I rang a doorbell and they would come out like the side gate and they paid cash. And I was like, I don't know, man, but I'm going to, I'll be here next week too. <laughs> but it was like that. I, I remember you talking about it. You were like, look, knowing that I got that business every week. It's beautiful. Exactly. And it's just, you know, it's, it's money that you can, can guarantee. In fact, I was talking with a buddy of mine, we were doing a, a podcast yesterday and he brought up a really good point that I think 
like if a detailer took this one piece of advice, this could change their business. And that is, when do you schedule the next visit with someone to, to detail their car? The best time to do it is when you're right there with them doing their car right then. So it's like, you know, if, if I went to Jimbo and I said, Jimbo, I need you to detail my car. He goes, great. And then Jimbo could just simply go, hey, by the way, let's go ahead and get it on the calendar. When do you want your car done again? Is it a monthly thing that you want done? Is it a quarterly thing? You know, depending on the services that, that he had just done. And he could book me that next appointment right then. And so you're starting to book much further out, but that's okay because that's that. It, it's not the continuity, but it's like that reoccurring client. And then that conversation very easily leads to the next conversation, which is, um, well, you know what, Pete, uh, since you want me to come out and, and do your car, you know, every month or, you know, every quarter or whatever, by the way, I've got this other program over here. It's my quarterly, you know, detailing program. And it's a really easy transition to just take them right into your continuity program that you've got that you can set up for them and have that money that you know is coming in every month. Like that's one of the cool things for you and I with the detailer in a circle is for us, it's a continuity program. And we know every month that we've got basically the same amount of money every month coming in. And we don't have to think about it. All we've got to focus on is providing the value for our members. Right. And it's the same thing with the detailer. It's like, you know, you get, and again, it just, I, I hate using the numbers that are so doable in detailing because a lot of detailers don't believe that they can have a six figure income in detailing. But it's actually not that difficult. But that's actually one thing that we covered. I think we even covered it. It was one of the tips that we gave in a podcast a while back uh, when we were promoting the detailer inner circle. And it's, I think we showed how if you, you increased one additional customer, I think it was like per week or it wasn't even crazy, right? It was like right. you increased one additional customer per week, I think it was, with an average ticket increase of like 25 bucks or 30 bucks, something like that. Right. Like more when you, when you drew that out over the course of a year, it like doubled <laughs> your income or something. Right. It, those are loose numbers. I don't remember exactly, but no, we um, actually give them the, uh, the spreadsheet it's in the, that's right. Uh, Cause we did it in both of the detailer uh, marketing boot camps that we did. Yes. And we got a little Excel spreadsheet that just shows you, you can make these micro changes to your business but they have Tiny. what's called a compounding effect, right? It's just like compound yes. interest that people have heard about, but maybe they don't understand. It's the same way in your business. Micro changes can have a macro impact can have this major impact on your business because of the yep. compounding effect that goes in. Yep. Um, and, and that is one of the trainings that we have in the detailer inner circle. And we created that training because a lot of the feedback I was getting and we were getting was like, Hey, I need to make, you know, 50,000 bucks a year to quit my job. I hate my job. Right. I, it's my full-time job, but I, I, you know, I make 50 grand a year and my detailing, I'm only making, you know, working weekends, I'm making like 15 grand a year. And I really want to, you know, do detailing full-time, but I, I just need a way to make 50 grand a year. And we showed how you can make, and this isn't doing codings. This isn't doing, uh, you know, PPF or clear bras or anything crazy. This is like basic detailing services that we showed how you can really make over six figures a year doing it. And that's just one of the trainings right. in the detailer inner circle. This isn't some like, you know, janky training we just put together in a weekend. This is actually legit proven out stuff. Yeah, um, and, and you and I talk about all the time because people, like you said, they'll come in and go, hey, I'm new to detailing and I got to make more money. Yep. What do I need to do? I mean, we've handled that question so many different times and I don't want to go into, um, like you had a strategy that was like, here's my number one strategy that I do if I needed to go get a client today. And I'm going to save that because I want our detailer and our circle guys to have access to that one. Yeah. But I remember we were also talking about Google AdWords and you would um, like, you've always said Google AdWords is like one of the greatest tools for detailers for a couple of reasons. One, because most detailers don't actually use it. And so right. you don't have a lot of competition, but you were spending like five bucks a day on Google AdWords yeah. and getting a huge returns crazy. off of that. I mean, that's how I got that that uh interesting house <laughs> as a recurring client uh was a google ad i mean and i think my 
I think when I've since done it because I just got overwhelmed with the amount of calls, but, um, and I, really what I used Google ads for was to build up my continuity clients. Mm. And then once I did that, I really scaled it back because I didn't need to, I didn't need to run ads anymore. By that time, my Google business listing had taken off Yelp and kind of everything was flowing. Um, but I think at the time, like I found my sweet spot was seven bucks a day. Um, but, and I just looked at my total ad spend. I don't, I don't remember what my, I looked it up because I wanted to, um, in fact, in the detail inner circle, I have a new Google AdWords course and I laid out some keyword. I went through, uh, all my analytics and picked out some keywords that really were working and converting well and blah, blah, blah. But I think my total ad spend was only like five or seven grand uh, running, running Google ads, like in total in the Over couple years that years? I did. I think I, I don't know, a couple of years. It wasn't much, right? Because I would only run it like seven bucks a day. I narrowed it down to only running it like during my business hours. I didn't run it on weekends because I didn't want the phone to ring. Like it, it Google AdWords for me was so like, my ads are running, my phone's ringing. So I just like would turn off the ads when I didn't want my phone to ring and would turn them on when I did want it to ring. But let's say even if I spent five grand a year, right? That one client that I got from Google AdWords, they were spending right about a thousand bucks a month. Um, not 900, yeah, 980, 960, something like that a month. And I, I serviced them for about four and a half years. So wow. do the month, do the math on that, you know, just call it 12 grand, 12, 24, you know, 50,000 bucks that I made off them. You know, it's, and that's one client that, that blew my ad spend out of the water and made it profitable. One client that doesn't even include all the one-offs that I got during all that time. So that, yeah. For well, me, that's the thing too, is that like, cause what I do for a living is I, I do marketing for major companies and stuff. There's not a single industry out there that I'm aware of outside of detailing where you can only spend five to let's say seven grand a year and still have a six figure income off of that ad spend. Like it just doesn't happen. And people else. want re people. It's also an industry that makes it incredibly, it's not awkward to like step them into a continuity program or a reoccurring revenue right. model. It's, and especially the target clients that most detailers want. So most detailers want like high net worth individuals with nice cars that are, you know, and, and if you look at those types of individuals, they have their ducks in a row, right? Because they lead busy lives. And so they have everything on a schedule, right? And so they just fit you into that schedule because chances are they see the value in your service. So if they see the value in your service, they want their car cleaned all the time or, or regularly, I'll say, right? Because that's an extension of them as a person. It's right. an extension of their business that they're running, whether they're in real estate or whatever, you know, industry they may be in, um, or maybe they go to events a lot. So they want their car, you know, clean for those events that they do or whatever. It just kind of fits into their life. So it's not an awkward thing to fit in of like, Hey, I can do this once a month for right. you, or I could do this every couple of weeks for you. Um, I found that a lot of people want it done every week. And for me, it became too often. Right. <laughs> so I started, I started spacing my clients out, you know, at least every other week. That way it could fit in those like coding jobs or whatever that may, you know, take a couple of days to complete. I, I, for me, I learned that if I had a client every week, it just, it was too often for me and I couldn't fit other work in. Um, but still what a, what a problem to have, right. Of like, Oh my gosh, this person wants me to come out too often. I gotta, I gotta right. tell them I can't come out as often as they want me to. Well, and I mean, you, you actually kind of hit on something there that we've talked about in the uh, detailer inner circle, which you can uh, try out the giveaway at detailergiveaway.com. Thank you, Pete. Um, and that is like salespeople. Like I, I was a financial planner for 16 years. And as a financial planner, you need your car to look good when you're driving over to someone's home or even when they're coming to your office and everyone knows that's your car because you got this right. assigned parking spot and it's right there in the front of the building. Like you need the car to look good. And you brought up real estate. Like real estate is notorious for this. Like they are so vain in real estate. And I don't mean that negatively. I just mean like they've been taught your personal brand is everything. And I know this because I literally train 
probably you know, 10 to 20,000 realtors a year on how to market their business. And so like a, a really, like, let's say you've never detailed a car before, you're starting today. Go to a, a real estate office, find out who the owner is, the, the broker of the office, the manager, whoever it is, and offer to do their car for free so you can show them what you do. And then just say, hey, you know what? Why don't we work out a deal where I'll be here every Tuesday from you know eight till noon or whatever. We'll find out whatever day they have their office meetings because real estate, they all have an office meeting. Just find out when that is. And hey, I can detail all your people's cars and you know it'll be on them. They can pay for it, but it'll be here you know, at your office while they're in the meeting. And you could literally just pick up a lot of reoccurring clients by doing something as simple as that. And that's great money and it's easy. And it's a, and then it's also a great perk. And this is another thing that I don't want to go too deep into because it's in the detail and inner circle trainings, but, but offering these perks of like, Hey, we have a car detailer here once a week, yeah. right? That's a big dip. Just as we, as detailers are looking for differentiators to set us apart from everyone else, all these other companies, whether it's real estate or whatever, are also looking for ways to differentiate themselves to draw in better talent, better employees, especially right now with yep. it being so hard to get employees. Companies are constantly looking for different things that they can bring in. Look at Google, for example, right? With with uh, all the free food they give away or what their offices and their creative spaces are cool. All these other little companies are looking at that of like, hey, what else could we incorporate to make it a fun place to work, a cool place to work, kind of draw in better employees and detailing could be one of those ones. And yeah. we show you how to do it in the detailer inner circle. We yeah. lay it out. And you can get the detailer inner circle for free for a whole year, 12 months. How do they do that, Pete? Uh, detailergiveaway.com, Jimbo. Thanks for asking. And it's free to enter. It's fun. We're just running a contest. It's like, you can just enter your email. You could stuff the ballot box like Pete talked about, right? By sharing the link and getting someone else to sign up. And it's really a cool group that uh, we're all there to help each other, right? And we have a we have a Voxer group, or like a group chat, essentially, where we bounce ideas off each other. And what's cool is there's people from all over the country, really. So, you know. We've had people from the UK, Australia. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think those are just the two other countries that I can think of. Okay, I stand corrected. Which, we have a global group. <laughs> I stand corrected. I don't know if we've ever had anybody from Canada. Do you remember? I don't know if we have. I don't know. Actually, you know but, what? I think we do because freaking Canadian credit cards, whenever they go to run them, like my merchant account hates it. Got it. So I think we do have someone in there from, from Canada it. right now. Because I, I We don't hate you Zipka. if you're in Canada. We just hate yeah. that we have to run your credit card. Yeah, that's because it like... It, for those who don't have a merchant account, like what they're doing is when you enter the street address and the zip code, they're checking the numbers to make sure that those numbers match the account. And like Canada has like letters in their zip code. And yes. It's like, it's different Weird. than ours. And so yes. I think that's what throws off the merchant account. And, and the cool thing is, is that if you are listening to this, the majority of my audience is based in the US, but if you are, but there are a lot in Australia, UK, Canada, whatever. And if you are listening to this, the principles that we teach in the detailer inner circle work no matter where you live, right? And so, and if you're wondering kind of how it works, Pete is the marketing expert, I'm the detailing expert. So I put the detailing slant on all the marketing that Pete talks about. And so when we talk about Facebook ads or Google ads or these contests or uh, the slew of other things that we talk about in the detailer inner circle, uh, it, just know that it always has a detailing slant and it always is, hey, this is how it applies to detailing. So right. just so you know that, yeah. putting, putting that out there. Yeah, no, because I wouldn't have the first clue on how to detail. Like every time I talk about what you did to my car, I'm like, was that a coating? Is that a sealant? What, what was that again? I don't remember. But, you know, I think whenever I think about the detailer inner circle, I think that's what makes it so unique. It's not like me as a detail. It, there's there's just I follow this guy in the this is a little tangent, but I follow this guy in the paintless dent repair space. Right. And I followed him for a really long time because back in I think it was like 2015, I did like a PDR painless dent repair course. And so I kind of like stepped into that world a little bit. And that's how I found out, found out about this guy who was just doing a, like a course on how to do painless dent repair. Well, over the pat over the course of like the past years, whatever, since 2015, he's rebranded himself into this like marketing guy. 
which is cool. It's great for him. It seems like he's having success. I always see him as the PDR guy, right? right. And, and he's like this hardcore guy and how and has all these tattoos and whatever. He's really like transitioned himself. But I, I just always still remember him as like the PDR guy. And it always like, I don't know, it just rubs me wrong sometimes. Mm. So it's like, were you always a marketing guy? I, I don't know. So I, what I love about the detailer inner circle is like, I don't have to try to pretend like I'm someone I'm not because we, I just brought in an expert. Right. Right. And you, and then you don't have to pretend to like be a detailer of like, I got a coding on my car. It's like, no, we, so I feel like it's a, it's a cool thing that we could just bounce off each other. And like, we have, you know, we each have our respected fields that we're in and then we blend them together. And I think, I think that's important for people to know that like, I'm not claiming to be like this expert marketing guy, but I did bring in an expert marketing guy. Right. Right. You know, for all of the the people right now, since we're at the end of December, basically, who are in states that have to deal with a lot of snow or a lot of rain in winter, what are some of the strategies that that you tell them about? And the reason why I'm I'm asking you like this one, I know you and I talk about it all the time in the course, because that comes up a lot, right? Because we got people who have those those issues. But I think there's this mindset that a lot of people have who are like, oh, it's winter. I can't do work right now. And it's like, dude, that's so far from the truth because we got guys who are killing it. Like, remember that guy who drove down from Washington? I don't remember his name. Like, Washington, where it freaking rains, rains like every day. Yes. And he's like, oh, yeah, we're so busy. I got like, I don't remember what he had, like four or five detailers. Yeah. And like, they were booked every, like, he showed us his calendar. He goes, all my detailers are booked for like the next two, three weeks, whatever yep. it was. And he goes, it doesn't matter that it's raining. People still want their car cleaned. And that's what you know, it's, you know, it's interesting is, and we've talked about this before in a lot of the private podcasts and I won't go too in depth with it, but, um, and you talk about it in relation to your income, right? We can only kind of see, uh, X number X levels ahead of us as far as our income is concerned. Right. And it's like two and a half times your income. That's all you can imagine yourself. Yes. And so us as detailers as well, we, and it's a limiting belief, right? That you can only make two and a half times what your current income is. And so us as detailers, we have this limited belief that is a false negative belief that I don't know if that's a phrase, a false negative belief. Anyway, it's a negative belief, a true negative belief, right? It would be true negative. Anyway, whatever. But that people don't want their cars detailed or done when the weather's not sunny and 75 and beautiful. But the reality is, is that that's just a false belief. Right. And and we believe the lie to ourselves because, and maybe we look at it through the lens of our own, yeah. uh, our own world, right? That, well, why would we pay for that? But in the reality is we would never pay to get our car detailed because we are a detailer and we would just do it ourselves. Right. But point being is there's people in in states that have disastrous weather that are crushing it. In fact, I have a podcast right after this uh, that I've had before with this guy, Paul Frasco, and he lives in Massachusetts and he crushes it through the winter. Now his, he has a shop and a mobile, his mobile shuts down during the winter, right? But his shop is busting at the seams Mm. and has been for years and years and years. So it, it really is this limited belief that like it shuts down in the winter. It's just, you need and there's to get all kinds of different reasons why people need it. Sometimes they just need the interior done. Other times um, you, I remember you shared this with the group. It was a uh, salt removal. Yeah. What, is that what you call it? Salt yeah. removal? Or? Yeah. Because in the Midwest or these States that get heavy, heavy snowfall, they put salt on the road. So in, but in California, we put dirt <laughs> and rocks to save the environment it's covid it's covid on the road that's all we got here. yeah but in in the midwest or or the east coast they put salt to help melt the snow down so the roads aren't horrible right well that salt gets kicked up and that's why when you go to the midwest and you see older cars they're like rust buckets right, right? and and yeah and that's why when people are selling used cars you'll often see the phrase like california car or like not from the Midwest or not from somewhere where it snows, where there's salt on the road, because then, you know, the whole undercarriage and stuff will be rusted out anyway. So yeah, salt removal could be a big service that people need. And sometimes people don't just want, and that can be a continuity service too. And that could definitely be a continuity service. Right. And so, um, 
And then think about just all the stuff that comes along with the snow and mud and dirt and water and melting snow. And so the interiors get wrecked and there's tons and tons of opportunities. Um, yeah. During the winter months. Yep. So and if yeah. you want to know more of them, you should go over to detailergiveaway.com and it. uh, it's and free. What do you have to lose? That's what I would tell people. Like, what do you have to lose by putting in your email and entering the contest? You may win. Um, and it, may change your whole business there you go why not so as, as we always like to say on uh, another podcast that i do what's the, that could worst what's the worst that could happen you might make some money you might make some money you know <laughs> exactly so that's <laughs> right it on, that's what Pete. i tell everybody go to detailergiveaway.com get registered for the contest detailergiveaway.com i will link it below so that you don't even have to go over your browser and type that in and guess how to spell detailer or giveaway or if there's a period or a dash or a space which there isn't but i'll link it all below uh, so you don't even have to worry about that we try to make it super easy That's and i it. saw when i went over there pete to detailer giveaway i, I saw I'm switch it over here uh that you can even enter with your facebook Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, that's that software. So. Has nothing to do. I mean, I'm not a programmer, I'm a marketer. <laughs> Let someone else do that. So yeah, detailergiveaway.com. And uh we'll see you guys in the detailer inner circle. Maybe cool. at least one of you. Yeah, at least one. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All, All right, right man. I appreciate your time. your time. You got right. it. Bye. See ya.